Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Wesley. This is Wu Kang Cook. Uh, today we're doing a, a Chinese uh, rice porridge. It's called congee, uh, or in, depending on where in the world you are, you might see it called congee, or you might see it called shi pan, uh, or you even might see it called juk, depending on which Asian culture you're referring it to. Uh, for me, I grew up knowing this as shi fan because I come from a Taiwanese family. Uh, but again, it's a very simple concept, so it can't be uh, that surprising to find out that it exists in very, very, very many uh, Asian cultures. It pretty much exists in every Asian culture that I can think of. Um, so, uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to take a shot at creating a Chinese kanji or juk, uh, which is going to look very, very simple because for anybody who has ever made rice porridge, they, they will know uh, that rice porridge is basically just overcooked rice. It's basically just rice that has way too much water in it, and then you get a very, like, porridgey looking rice, which is kind of like uh, most of the time when we're making rice, that's the quality that we're trying to avoid because uh, we don't want our rice to look like oatmeal unless we actually want it to look like oatmeal, which is what we're going to do today. Uh, so we're going to take a look at uh, how to make that stuff. Uh, and then usually when I, as far as I know when I was a kid, um, uh, we usually just stopped there. And you just make uh, a bowl of rice and that's basically what you eat for breakfast. You might throw uh, maybe like some soy sauce on top, maybe some like furikake, something very, very simple. Uh, it's generally considered a really, really quick and really, really easy breakfast. Uh, today we're going to do a version that comes from a uh, cafe in uh, Honolulu uh, called Coco Head Cafe, uh, where they do a really, really fancy kanji. Uh, the only, the single only fancy kanji that I have ever seen uh, because it's rice porridge. So like how, how fancy can you actually get with it, uh, to be honest. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a couple of ingredients, most of which come from Hawaiian cuisine. Uh, so we're going to use some Hawaiian sausage, um, and then we're, uh, I guess that's really the only like really uh, Hawaiian thing, but we're going to use some Hawaiian sausage uh, today. Uh, in the recipe, the video that I did, uh, that we actually used Hawaiian uh, sausage from Hawaii because I like brought some whole sausage back from Hawaii. Uh, today we're going to do it with some uh, Portuguese linguiça, uh, which is essentially the same thing. It really is the same thing uh, by a different name. Uh, so, if you have any questions for me, feel free to drop your questions in the chat. Uh, I don't know everything about kanji, uh, but I know lots of stuff, so hopefully I can be helpful or informative, or at the very least, entertaining to watch. Uh, if you're looking for it, as with pretty much everything that we cook on stream, uh, there's a recipe video that goes along with what we're cooking today. Uh, in that recipe video, I also did uh, a number of different versions. I think I did like three or four different versions uh, of like ways to eat kanji, uh, which is like really put whatever you would put on top of rice in it. So, uh, that's that's essentially uh, how we did it. Uh, and we also did a recipe for how we're going to cook uh, this Cocoa Head Cafe version. Uh, so if you're looking for that stuff, head over to the YouTube channel, check out what's going on over there. Uh, that's at youtube.com slash cook. Lots of cool stuff going on uh, over there. All right, so uh, kicking things off first, we're starting off, this is with our aromatic elements. So this is our four cloves. Actually, that was more like six or seven cloves of garlic because they were like small pieces of garlic. Uh, uh, and then what we're gonna use next is uh, about an inch. I can just use this whole thing. Uh, this is gonna be about an inch or about a tablespoon's worth of ginger. This is actually maybe closer to two tablespoons of ginger. Uh, the reason that I'm being a little bit loose today uh, is because we're using these aromatics in our rice, in our kanji today, uh, which means that we have a lot of give room. Uh, because it, it will vary depending on how much water is in there, right? Uh, so the only real thing that we're actually measuring today is the rice. So we're going to make sure that we use specifically a cup and a half of rice. Uh, but uh, what's, what actually matters uh, is not so much how much rice you use, but how much rice you use in relation to how much liquid is in the wok. Uh, so uh, behind me I have a wok, actually that's a pot, uh, burning. Uh, and we're going to use, that should be eight cups of chicken stock we're actually using today. Um, and then what we're going to do uh, is drop in our cup and a half of rice uh, and as that cooks it will start reducing and we're probably going to add more water to it uh, as it cooks and that's just to sort of like prolong the cook time and just make sure that the rice cooks all the way through. So um, juk or kanji or shifan as depending on where, where you are uh, is mostly a, a, a sort of feel thing which is how you make it with leftover rice. So. Uh, today we don't really have very much leftover rice, so I'm going to do it with raw rice, which you can absolutely do. Uh, at which point you are literally just cooking overcooked rice. Uh, but if you yeah, if you do have leftover rice, like say if you have 
uh, rice from last night that's left over and it's gone stale or something or you don't want to eat it or you do want to eat it and you want to eat it with rice porridge uh, you can just throw that in there and just essentially just let it cook some more all right zebra dice that's a great username thank you silver is always awesome cool All right, so for our garlic, you'll notice that we didn't do very much. I really just smashed it with the flat side of my knife. Uh, and that was pretty much it. For our ginger, on the other hand, uh, ginger is a very, very durable root veggie. Uh, so we do actually want to go through and make sure that we get uh, real good fine mints on this stuff. Uh, you can't be quite as lazy with ginger. Um, lots of people ask me about like what's the real secret or like how do you do a fine mint. Uh, there's no secret to a fine mint. It's really just about like persistence. Like how bad do you want it? Or how bad do you want to avoid chunks of ginger in your kanji? Uh, if you don't mind it, just throw it in di like it's a dice. All right. So that's our ginger set this aside uh, and then moving on to the very last uh, last of our aromatics uh, we're gonna slice up some green onions today so uh, if you notice by the way so these green onions are not that old I'm kind of uh, a little bit annoyed that they're wilting already I actually bought these yesterday but if you know that notice that this starts happening uh, so if your green onions they have like yellow bits so this is not a good sign you don't want your green onion to look like that. Uh, it's not the end of the world though, just peel it off um, uh, and continue to use the rest of the green onion. Uh, it's basically like you think of it as like uh, when a flower starts wilting, that's what's happening is really it's the green onion is starting to wilt. Uh, the other thing that we want to look for when we're uh, using green onions uh, is if it starts sprouting another green onion. So like this, if it starts sprouting another stalk, we probably want to pull that off. Because um, the, the, when they get really, really narrow, that's essentially uh, a sign that you have like a really, really young uh, leaf to the green onion. And that really, really young uh, green onion leaves, uh, they can get like a little bit bitter. So I like to pull those off. Uh, and then the last thing that I'll also mention, uh, I know this is a lot of information about green onions, but uh, the last thing that I'll also mention is that uh, uh, green onions, they're really, really dirty because they literally just came out of the dirt. Um, so uh, uh, I don't always stand by uh, washing your veggies, but I actually wash all of my veggies um, just out of habit. But uh, specifically with green onions or really anything that's raw, if you're going to use it as a garnish, you probably want to try and... Uh, wash those. Uh, I use a fruit wash. You could just use dish soap or even at the very least give it a rinse. Uh, green onions, they're, uh, specifically though, uh, when they come out of the dirt, they're like literally still covered in dirt. So if you pick it up from the grocery store uh, and you pull it open, if you like peel back some of the leaves, you'll probably notice uh, that there is literally dirt sitting around in that green onion. So um, uh, at the very least, uh, if you're not going to wash your veggies, uh, at the very least give it a rinse to get the dirt off at least so that you're not eating literal dirt. All right. So what I'm doing, I'm slicing up, this is just the whites of our green onions. Uh, they, You'll notice that a green onion it has two different textures to it, so the white uh, stocky bits of our green onions, they're a little bit more durable and rigid, uh, so we can use those in uh, long cooks and wok fries. Today we're going to throw this into our uh, kanji. Um, you might also see me use this in like wok fries specifically because they are like durable enough to withstand wok heat. Uh, the greens on the other hand, you don't want to use those in, in a wok fry uh, because they'll probably just like sort of fall apart. Uh, the only exception to that uh, is when we chop them into like really, really wide planks, uh, which you'll see me do on occasion. We did that like with our Mongolian beef recipe, for example. Uh, the reason that that's okay is because uh, if they're chopped really, really wide, uh, they might actually stand a chance of like not falling apart, but they actually do still fall apart a little bit. And I actually uh, don't love doing that in a lot of stir fries. The only time that I really do that is when I'm hacking a recipe and uh, it's a requirement. Uh, which is a big part of how uh, P.F. Chang's does their Mongolian beef. That's why we did it in that recipe. It's like a big part of their branding, actually, I think. Uh, it's like where they source their green onions from. Mm. 
All right. So there's our greens. Uh, the last thing that we're going to do uh, before, actually, before we head over, before we finish up with our prep, uh, usually I would do this in order and we'll just do all of our prep and then all of our cooking. Uh, a kanji, on the other hand, uh, it actually takes quite a bit of time. Uh, the reason that we're able to do that is because wok frying happens so quickly uh, that it will happen in like 5-10 minutes. Uh, with a kanji, we actually need a good solid 20-30 minutes on the stove. So before we finish up with our prep, I'm actually going to start cooking our kanji, uh, which over here on the stove, uh, we have this pot of what should be simmering. <laughs> chicken stock. Uh, if you don't have chicken stock, you could just use water to uh, think of it as like if you've ever made, by the way, if you've ever made rice with chicken stock, it's a really, really great uh, solution. Like a good way to just impart some form of flavor to your uh, rice. Uh, there's lots of fun ways that you can uh, do that too. You can do it with like coconut milk. That's a really fun like uh, Thai way of doing rice. Um, you can throw a little bit of uh, saffron in it. That's a really fun way of adding uh, some color too. Where's my measuring cup? All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna add, this is just straight up raw rice. If you've got leftover rice, you can also toss leftover rice in too. This is one, and we're gonna do a one and three quarters cup. Do I believe it? <laughs> uh, that I do not. You should believe whatever you wanna believe. You do, you. All right, so there's our rice going in. Uh, the reason that I didn't do that very first is because we also want to throw in our aromatics too. So uh, in the original recipe that I did, uh, we actually bloomed these. Uh, so we did it in the wok um, and then bloomed it uh, for the sake of uh, speeding things up uh, because I didn't want to wait to bring that uh, stock to boil. Uh, and also I forgot to get this, the extra wok. Oh, the six other woks that I own are not in the house, so I would have to go get them. So. Uh, so we're doing it in a pot today instead, um, but uh, yeah. All right, so that's getting going. What we're going to do is periodically come back to our stock here. Uh, and really what we're doing is just sort of like agitating the rice to make sure that things are uh, moving along. Uh, we want to make sure to give that a stir every once in a while, uh, because if you don't, it will start sticking uh, to the bottom of the pot, which we don't want, and then you're going to end up with burned rice. Uh, and then the other thing that I'm going to do here, I have this bowl of water that I'm setting aside on the side burner. Uh, we're going to keep that uh, on hand because we're going to gradually be adding more and more water to this stock as it keeps boiling. Um, uh, so what we're looking for uh, there is to like just sort of keep that pot kind of simmering and as it cooks we're, we're going to keep an eye on what the texture of our rice looks like. Uh, and then once we have the texture of the rice that we're looking for then we can uh, sort of finish things off. But until we do we're going to continue to just keep adding more water to it uh, so that uh, things don't overcook. Or technically they are overcooking depending on how you look at it. Alright so <laughs> anyway next up uh, we have, this is going to be our Portuguese sausage, as soon as I figure out how to open these up. Uh, if you're here in Oakland, by the way, the only, the only shop that I have been able to find these at uh, is at uh, Taylor's Homemade Sausage uh, in uh, Swan Market in uh, downtown Oakland. Um, they're probably readily available somewhere else. I know that I have been, I have been told uh, that you can find this stuff in most like Italians, uh, Italian uh, like butcher shops. Uh, so if you're looking for it, uh, that's probably the first place that I would look. But if you're here in Oakland, though, definitely go with uh, Taylor's Homemade. They're really great. Uh, but it, that that said, though, if you are in Hawaii, uh, you can find this stuff in like most most markets in general, uh, because because it specifically is like readily available because it's in all like a lot of Ho Hawaiian cuisine. Uh, what we're gonna use, I'm kind of eyeballing it today, uh, because. <laughs> the whole recipe is eyeballed, to be honest. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to uh, small dice, uh, medium dice, uh, our sausage here. Uh, and essentially what we're going to do is use this uh, as part of our topping later on. So we're going to wok fry this uh, and then top our kanji with it. Thank you. 
Uh, so our Portuguese sausage, by the way, just like any other sausage, uh, it contains a lot of fat in it. So uh, when you slice it open, you should be able to see it if you've got a good sausage, which I think we do. Uh, you can see all of this fat, and that's all of the fat that your butcher has built in. Uh, all of these white pockets, that's all pork fat. That's what we're looking for here. Uh, so if you've got a good, uh, a good uh, link of sausage, uh, that's what you should see. If you've got a bad one, uh, that's, you're probably not going to see that fat, which is uh, what you want to look out for when you're picking your sausages. Um, that's also s sort of like the downside of like when you're at a, like a big box uh, grocery store, like Safeway or something, uh, and it's, your sausages are like packed up in like a prepackaged uh, bunch. Uh, so you don't have really have the ability to sort of like take a look at like what the content of the sausage is. Um, same is also true with your uh, ground beef and ground meats too. Yeah. So depending on how picky you want to be, uh, that's what I usually look for when I'm so shopping for sausages. Like uh, the fat content, the meat content, and what is like the, the general like composition of our sausage actually looks like. Uh, the reason that that fat is so important, by the way, uh, is because we're going to start wok frying this in a second. Uh, and as, as that fat starts to render, it's going to be a big part of like uh, what uh, goes, it becomes sort of, I guess you think of it as like the seasoning to our kanji. So uh, it's really, really important. It's always important uh, anytime that you're eating sausage, but it's really important today uh, because uh, everything that we're putting on top of our kanji is going to have a lot of uh, richness to it because kanji itself is pretty bland. It's basically just rice. It's a bowl of rice, basically. Uh, so today we're going to do it with, this is some Portuguese sausage. We're going to dice up some bacon uh, where we're going to render that bacon fat out actually. Uh, and then dice up those uh, solids uh, before throwing those solids in. Uh, and then we're going to do some croutons. Uh, I was pretty skeptical about this first at first, but uh, it's really, really good. What we're going to do is <clears throat> we're going to dice up some croutons, uh, and then we're going to toss those croutons in the bacon fat with a little bit of cinnamon. We're going to have this nice cinnamon bacon crouton, uh, which is honestly the best crouton that I have ever created. So, or even ever had. Cool. So uh, let's get into it. So the next thing that we're going to do, so in the original recipe video that we did, uh, we used what was literally actually uh, leftover bread. So it was bread that was, I think it was four or five days old. Uh, and it was an actual leftover piece of bread that I had used from like breakfast or something from a couple days ago. Uh, I didn't happen to have any leftover bread on hand. So what I ended up doing uh, as we went to the grocery store and just bought bread that I left sitting out for a couple of days. This is, uh, I think, like three or four days old. Uh, and very specifically, when you make croutons, they have to be leftover. You can't do croutons with uh, fresh bread because it has too much moisture in it. Uh, so when we make our croutons like we are today, uh, what we're looking for is all of the qualities that you don't want to see in bread if you're just eating bread. So uh, it should be like dry and kind of flaky. It should sort of be starting to like fall apart, kind of crumbling. Uh, those are the qualities that we're looking for in our bread today, which is seems counterintuitive, but it's really, really important. going to dice all this up. Like crouton, extra croutons. So this might be a personal preference for me, uh, but I really dislike large croutons. I find that they're really annoying uh, and difficult to eat. So I'm going to go for a pretty small uh, dice on our croutons or bread here. Uh, that's just because I don't like large croutons. Like, I don't understand uh, what the expectation is for how are you supposed to eat a crouton that's this large. Oh, that's a giant piece of bread. Why would? What's the plan there? You know. Uh, by the way, uh, lots of people ask me about the, the knives that I have. Uh, lots of people ask specifically about this uh, carbon steel chef's knife. Uh, that's the, like kind of like the main knife that I use. That's why it's on like every video. Um, 
the other knives if you if you're like on the hunt for building a knife collection or like a set of knives that will serve you uh, the main one that you need is going to be that chef's knife that's why uh, I use it all the time it's, that's the reason that you need it is because it's the one that you're going to use all the time um, but uh, in addition to that though there are other a couple of other sets of knives that you are going to need you're not going to use it nearly as much um, so that means that they can be a little bit cheaper and you'll be just fine because you're not going to really use them that much. Uh, the, the main one that I look for, actually it's probably the, the second most important knife that I use all the time is going to be a paring knife. Uh, but maybe the third one is going to be a serrated knife like this because you're going to need it for anything uh, that uh, is delicate that you don't want to smush, like bread for example. Uh, you can also use it for like tomatoes. Uh, or uh, ideally, actually, if you've got a really sharp knife, you shouldn't need to use a serrated knife for, for your tomatoes. But uh, things like that, that's why your serrated knife is going to be pretty important. Uh, and then I have a bunch of other knives, but uh, you really don't need them. I've got a butcher knife for like really large uh, slabs of meat. Uh, and then a couple other knives, but what those are really the, the three important ones. That paring knife, that chef's knife, and also this serrated knife. Uh, and it's also, by the way, the reason why it's maybe the cheapest knife that I own. Pascal, yeah, thank you. Good night. Thank you, and uh, have a good night. Thanks for tuning in for as long as you could. All right, so here's our croutons. How are we doing this? Yeah. Okay, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to set these aside for a second, we're, then we're going to get to our bacon fat. Uh, we're going to render that bacon fat and then what we're going to do is we're going to toss our croutons in that bacon fat uh, and then throw some cinnamon on top of it and then we're going to bake it for about 10 minutes or so. Uh, so uh, before we get to that though, let's get to our bacon here. All right. uh, so this is, this is, by the way, this is some thick cut bacon. Uh, what we're specifically looking for when we use thick cut bacon uh, it's particularly in the instance that we're using it right now uh, is all of this white stuff we want all of this nice uh, fatty bits and pieces of bacon that are going on here uh, that's really important because as we start like uh, cooking up our bacon uh, that's going to render into our fat so that's particularly important today because it's going to be the central ingredient uh, in our crouton which is uh, might be one of the most important things that we use today so uh, we are going to need a lot of bacon fat uh, but that's also uh, gonna be true for things like a, uh, say like a pasta carbonara if you're using bacon for your pasta carbonaras uh, anytime that you're doing like a say like a breakfast omelet all of these things that's where all of the flavor is gonna come from is from the bacon fat uh, lots of people think that the flavor of bacon comes from the solids and they like uh, bacon bits in their salads and stuff uh, but in reality what's where you're really deriving uh, the flavor of bacon it actually comes from the fat uh, so that's why you see a lot uh, when you see like say like a BLT you'll see like the sandwich has been fried in the bacon fat uh, lots of like fun creative ways that uh, chefs will use uh, bacon fat in order to like incorporate it into their recipe that's why they do that is because uh, that's where all of the flavor lives Let's get some bacon yeah exactly uh, very important but specifically uh, thick cut bacon if you don't have thick cut bacon what happens is uh, you probably have to use like twice as much uh, because you're not going to be able to drive as much fat from it. And I did actually try this once uh, with thin cut bacon because it was the only bacon that I could find. Uh, and you're going to have a lot more trouble uh, rendering fat out of it. Right. Uh, so bacon, another good example of very important to have a nice sharp knife because it's going to be really difficult uh, to do this dice if your knife isn't sharp because it's just going to sort of like uh, catch on the fat uh, and then it's going to be really really annoying to try and get that fat to chop. So we're going to set this bacon fat aside for a quick second. Actually, it's not the last thing. Might be the last thing. 
actually. I think it is the last one. We're done chopping. Let's clean some stuff up. Yeah. All right, so uh, over on the stove, we've got a couple of things happening here. Uh, so over on the stove, I've got my pot going. Uh, here's our rice porridge going on. This definitely needs some more water. Uh, now you can't, well, you can kind of see it on YouTube. Uh, you can notice some rice is, has definitely turned into cooked rice. This is already cooked. Um, but what we want is more than cooked rice. We want this to be more porridgey than cooked. Um, so I'm adding a little bit more water and then I'm going to turn the fire down and we're going to let this simmer for another maybe 10 minutes or so. Cool. Uh, so in the meantime, while that's going, we're going to get started on our bacon fat so that we can do our croutons next. Uh, so I've got a cold wok going in here. Uh, so here's our bacon fat in a relatively cold wok that was like on. <laughs> but what we're going to do is very gradually bring up the temperature of that wok. Uh, so I've got it at medium heat and then we're going to try and hold that at medium heat for quite a while. Uh, if you've got a really fatty bacon, by the way, uh, if your bacon is super fatty, uh, that should start rendering fat out pretty quickly. Like, mm, you kind of are already. But if you find that it's not really getting going, uh, you can do is add a little bit of water uh, and that's just going to give you your bacon a little bit of time to start going uh, before it starts burning so if you've got a wok especially this is especially necessary in a wok because the wok is going to heat up really really fast uh, that's going to buy you a little bit of time before the fat starts rendering uh, to just sort of like have a little bit of extra time on heat before things start burning Uh, so I don't have a I don't have a camera over my uh, side burner, but uh, uh, what we're doing is just regularly checking back on it and making sure that we give it a quick stir, uh, and that's really all that you need to do with kanji. Uh If you want, you can even walk away uh, and just kind of let that keep going. Don't forget the rice, yeah, aloha. That would be tragic. Uh, I actually did that yesterday. Uh, by the way, uh, if you're ever cooking anything that involves a stir fry. The very, very first thing that you should do before you do anything else is cook the rice. <laughs> it's really important. Uh, it should always be the first thing that you do uh, because if you don't do that, you're gonna, what's going to happen is you're going to finish eating or finish cooking and then you're going to be ready to eat uh, and then you're not going to have rice to eat with your stir fry, which is what I did yesterday. Uh, actually, what I was doing was making fried rice uh, and then I forgot to make the rice for the fried rice. Uh, so we had to st I had to stop uh, and then wait for like 45 minutes while the rice cooked. So uh, very, very important. If you're doing anything that involves rice, the first thing that you should do is cook the rice because it's going to take really long. So, but thank you for the reminder. Because I did that yesterday and it, it sucked. It sucked real bad. All right, so that's our bacon getting going. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to very gradually uh, bring up the fire temperature here. Uh, and as that goes, uh, two things are going to happen. The first thing is that that water is going to cook off. Uh, and then the second thing is going to happen is that water is going to get replaced with liquid bacon fat. Uh, and that's kind of the purpose of that liquid is so that it's just kind of buying us a little bit of time uh, so that the, our bacon doesn't burn in that intermittent time. And that's, yeah, exactly. It's really tragic. It sucked. I ate dinner at 10 o'clock last night. It, it was terrible because I had to sit around and wait. Yeah. Cool. I'll actually throw this extra rice in there too. Uh, all right.
So again, I'm just regularly circling back to our rice here and making sure uh, that it uh, continues to cook. We're going to very gradually continue to add more water to it too, uh, as things sort of reduce uh, to just sort of buy us a little bit more cook time. So again, this is also the reason why you don't really need to be super careful uh, about proportions or measurements here, uh, because what we're really doing is just sort of uh, adjusting and adding more water as we cook. Yeah. Not the rice, yeah. Tragedy. All right, so our bacon fat is coming along nicely here. Uh, we're, again, also very important as you render bacon fat uh, to involve a lot of constant agitation. You want to uh, make sure that you don't walk away from that rendering bacon fat uh, because number one, it's going to take a little while, but also number two, uh, if you don't come back and remember to toss the fat, uh, it's going to start burning. So if it just sort of like sits on the wok, uh, it's going to, anything that's not moving around, it's just eventually just going to start burning. Again, another very important reason why you need a little bit of water in there if you're not paying attention to. Yeah. Cool. So there's our baking going. Ooh, do I prefer new or day old rice when stir frying? Yeah, so um, that, that's a really good question with a really long answer. Uh, if, if I'm doing like a stir fry, uh, we, uh, you're, you're always, I always prefer fresh rice uh, because it's gonna be fluffier. If you've got a really nice rice cooker, so this is a Zordorishi that I use, uh, it should actually stay fresh for, for a little while. Usually the rice in my Zordorishi will stay fresh for uh, almost a full 24 hours. It's still pretty fluffy. Uh, that's because it's a really nice rice cooker. I also have an older Panasonic one that I use sometimes. Uh, and it definitely, it dries out before like the end of the meal sometimes. So if you've got a shitty rice cooker, that shit will dry out really fast. Um, when we're eating a stir fry, that's what we're looking for. Yesterday, and specifically, uh, I was actually making fried rice, uh, in which case you actually do want leftover rice because uh, we're putting the rice back into the wok. So if you're going to cook that rice, uh, you actually want it to be devoid of like all of that liquid and moisture uh, because if it has moisture that's just going to make for a mushy stir fry or a mushy rice uh, so uh, in the pop-up that we operate though so we every friday we do a pop-up uh, here in oakland <coughs> and we mainly serve fried rice it's kind of the main thing that we do actually uh, in that scenario uh, it's actually illegal to use leftover rice for fried rice uh, for a number of dumb health code reasons uh, they're not dumb but they're boring uh, for a number of health code reasons, you actually can't use leftover rice. So, uh, or you can, but it's really, really difficult and uh, annoying. Uh, so when we do our fried rice in the pop-up, uh, we're actually using fresh rice uh, that's been treated in a number of different ways. Uh, so that, that is actually how I, how I did the fried rice that I did yesterday uh, for a recipe video that's going to come out eventually, I think probably in a couple weeks. Um, and in that, in that recipe, uh, we, I, I did the fried rice the way that we would do it in the pop-up. Uh, which is essentially uh, fresh rice, like literally, like right out of the rice cooker. That's what we want, is rice that is literally right out of the rice cooker. As soon as it dings, that's the rice that we want. Uh, so we're pulling that out uh, and then dusting it with a couple of tablespoons of cornstarch. Uh, and essentially what we're trying to do is get the granules of rice to separate from each other. Uh, and as they separate, that's going to be like kind of the quality of rice that we need um, when we're doing fried rice. Uh, so we don't want, uh, what we don't want are like the qualities that you look for when you cook a stir fry. So you don't want it to clump up. Uh, you don't want nice fluffy balls of rice. Uh, we, we don't want any kind of fluffiness. Uh, that All of that is a big problem uh, because it's not going to cook well in the stir fry. Uh, so for our fried rice, specifically for the fried rice yesterday, uh, we used fresh rice. I used fresh rice, uh, but I also tossed it in some cornstarch and that's basically just getting those granules to kind of separate from each other. Yeah. Ooh, have I ever used quail eggs? I have not. Um, yeah, I have not used work with quail eggs. They're really expensive, I think. So, uh, and also, uh, chicken eggs are easier to access. So, and also yield more like egg too. So. But uh, yeah, if somebody wants to send me some quail eggs, I would fuck with it.
All right, so our fat is getting going. You'll notice that we no longer have any water in there. Uh, what that is at the bottom of the wok now, that's our bacon fat. Uh, and as that bacon fat renders, now we're gonna have more, more, more liquid sitting at the bottom of the wok. Uh, the more liquid that you get, the more fat that you render and it just sort of compounds on itself. Uh, which is why it's also very important uh, when the bacon fat is just getting going before you have any liquid fat rendering uh, to add a little bit of water. Uh, if you're doing it in a cast iron, I found actually if you're doing it in a Dutch oven or a cast iron skillet or something that brings up uh, temperature really slow, uh, I found that you might actually be able to get away with it uh, as long as you're agitating the wok or agitating the pot very constantly. Uh, but especially in a wok like this uh, where the temperature is going to rise very quickly, uh, add a little bit of water and that's going to keep it from uh, burning. So at this point, I think our congee might actually be done already. I'm just going to keep adding water until we're ready to go, uh, just because why not? Uh, but at this point, I th it's pretty much pretty much there already. Um, so at this point, all we're really doing is just kind of buying more time uh, as everything else cooks. That's a little bit better. Sorry, the YouTube camera was crooked. But it seems okay though. You got quail legs by the baker's dozen. Oh yeah. Definitely, I will send you an address. What is a baker's dozen? I think that's 14, right? Is it, I think, or is it 13? I don't know what I would use quail legs for. I don't think about it. I know what I would use quail for, but I don't know what I would use quail eggs for. Uh, that's like a really specific thing. Offspring. Dan Quail's offspring. Yeah. <laughs> that's so dumb. Oh my god. It's the dumbest shit on Reddit. Alright. Anyway, back to this. Uh, so what we're doing, our bacon is uh, almost there. We could take a look uh, at our solids. This gets a little bit difficult when you're doing a lot of bacon like this uh, because it starts foaming like this. Uh, but what we're looking for is a relatively crispy piece of bacon. Um, and as it starts going, uh, that fat is going to start foaming like this and it makes it a little bit difficult to monitor uh, what your bacon bits will look like. Uh, so constantly agitate. Uh, the more that you agitate, the more that you'll break up that foam, by the way. so. Uh, that's going to be helpful too. Yeah, that's there. It's 13, yeah, I thought so too. I think uh, like a baker's dozen is a dozen uh, plus an extra one for the baker, I think. I think that's how it goes. Don't quote me on that. All right, so I'm pulling out my bacon fat or my bacon solids here. Um, for being really careful, what we really should be doing uh, is pouring this through a sieve uh, to really make sure that we get all of these solids out. Uh, I'm being lazy uh, and I don't feel like uh, cleaning the sieve. <laughs> so uh, what we're doing that I'm doing is just sort of fishing out the solids. Um, if you're really careful though, uh, get out that sieve or mesh sieve. Mesh, don't use plastic. Bacon fat will melt plastic for sure. Uh, but yeah, if you are being very careful, uh, especially if you plan on saving the bacon fat, um, you want to clarify the bacon fat. Because so, uh, bacon fat is not, uh, is not perishable. So bacon fat is shelf stable. You can leave that fat on the shelf uh, and it will stay for quite a while. Bacon solids, on the other hand, are, are absolutely perishable uh, and will spoil within a couple of days probably a couple maybe like 10 days or so uh, so in order to uh, have shelf stable bacon fat what you need to do is clarify it so you need to filter out all of those solids so if there's any solids left in your bacon fat uh, that's not shelf stable uh, but if you clarify it uh, that can sit on the shelf 
uh, for a while. So be very careful uh, with your bacon fat if you plan on keeping it shelf stable on your pantry shelf or something uh, like you don't plan on putting it in the refrigerator or even if you do plan on putting it in the refrigerator for a long time, uh, that's gotta be shelf stable. So you gotta filter it out, uh, pass it through a sieve. And then what I would do is also pass it through like um, maybe some cheesecloth or something really fine. All right, so here's our all of our liquid bacon fat that's going on here. Uh, we don't need heat anymore, uh, but we've got all of this li uh, wonderful fat going on here. So what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm killing the heat, uh, and then we're gonna add our croutons in here. And give it a toss. Uh, again, if you're being really careful, uh, if we had clarified that bacon fat, uh, you'll notice uh, you can't really see it. Uh, but if you were here and if you could look closer because the resolution on our uh, stove cameras is low, um, you would notice that there's all of this like uh, bacon solids that are starting to, to stick. Cooked bacon is shelf stable thanks to the nitrates. Is that true? Somebody fact check. I don't know how true that is. That doesn't sound true. Because the thing about it, it's like cook, it's cooked meat. So if you leave cooked meat out, that will eventually spoil. Somebody fact check it. All right, um, let's make this rice cooker. All right, so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a toaster oven. Actually, I'm gonna use an air fryer here. Uh, but I personally just think that an air fryer is just a convection bake oven. Uh, that, that's a whole different story. Uh, but uh, I, when I did this in the original recipe, I used an actual oven, so I just, I baked it at 350. Uh, what we're gonna do right now is air fry it. I actually don't think that it's gonna make a difference. Uh, I think that it's just convection baking, which means that it's gonna go a little bit faster. So uh, that's gonna be helpful. Uh, so here's our baked croutons. Actually, before we do that, let's do that cinnamon too. I forgot about the cinnamon. So again, we're off heat right now. This wok is should be ice cold at this point. Uh, and I'm adding this is some cinnamon. Uh, again, if you don't have a wok, you could also just be doing this in a large bowl too. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt too. I believe in the original recipe that we did, uh, we used a, uh, a rosemary salt uh, piece of bread. So it actually didn't need salt because the bread had been baked in salt. Uh, I'm adding a pinch of salt because I think it's gonna need some salt this time. All right, that, just, that smells really good. It kinda just smells like cinnamon and bacon now. So we're gonna pop this into, I'm just gonna call it a toaster oven. We're gonna pop this into a toaster oven, uh, 350 for uh, about 10 minutes. But what we're really trying to do is uh, bring out all the uh, remaining moisture that's gotta come out. Oops. All right, so while that's going, let's get to work on our sausage. This is tightening up. Medium rare chicken recipes. Oh god. Please don't medium rare your chicken. That's a terrible idea. Alright, so I'm adding again a little bit more water to our kanji uh, because it's starting to tighten up more than I'd like and I actually can feel uh, the spoon that it's got a there's some burnt rice going on on the bottom but 
Now we're gonna pretend like that. That's not happening. But that is gonna be a real fun day, a uh, fun time cleaning up later because I'm gonna have to scrape bacon or rice off the bottom of this pot. <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, back over on the stove. Uh, I just washed out our wok. We're gonna get this uh, reheated. Uh, and then we're gonna do our Portuguese sausage. So by the way, uh, when we wash out that wok, what I like to do uh, is leave that moisture sitting in the wok because I find because it's, well, partially because it's lazy, uh, but also because if you leave that moisture in when that water evaporates, when it finishes evaporating, uh, that's a pretty good uh, measure of like when your wok is ready to cook on again because it's kind of measuring how hot the wok is based off of how much liquid is still behind. Yeah. Cool. Hmm. I wish this camera wasn't so crooked. Is the camera crooked or is the walk crooked? I can't tell. Whatever. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, hello to everyone just tuning in. My name is Wesley. This is Wu Can Cook. Uh, if this is your first time tuning in, we're here every Tuesday at 6.30 PST uh, with new recipes out on my YouTube channel every Friday. So today, as with most live streams, uh, we're cooking through the recipe that came out on the live stream last Friday. Uh, so a couple of days ago, we did a uh, Chinese breakfast kanji uh, that's inspired by a version that you can find in Hawaii and uses a couple of uh, like fancy Hawaiian ingredients uh, from a cafe in Honolulu called uh, Coco Head Cafe, which is really famous. Uh, where they do easily the most fancy kanji that I have ever seen. Uh, mostly because the only other times that I've ever eaten kanji, it's basically just like rice porridge with soy sauce on top. So uh, <laughs> I use that, based off of that really fancy kanji, I used it as an opportunity uh, to get to a request that lots and lots and lots of people have been asking for, which is kanji. Um, and the reason that I never got to kanji before is because there's not really a recipe for it. It's basically like asking for a recipe for how to make rice, which is like very simple. <laughs> uh, so I use this as an opportunity to uh, run through a kanji video. Portuguese what? Yeah. Uh, so today, uh, this might be the most Hawaiian ingredient that we're using today. Uh, today what we're using is some Portuguese sausage, which is uh, something that comes from uh, Hawaiian cooking very, very commonly. So in Hawaii, you'll see this stuff uh, in every supermarket in, in, on the island uh, because it's they, Hawaiians love eating this stuff with breakfast. Uh, today, we're not in Hawaii, we're in California, uh, which makes Hawaiian sausage a little bit tricky to find. Uh, but Portuguese, uh, Hawaiian sausage is pretty much, you, they, they even will call it Portuguese sausage in Hawaii. Uh, and that's because what it really is, is a Portuguese linguiça, uh, which is a form of Portuguese sausage. So uh, I happen to be able to find this at a butcher shop nearby me uh, called Taylor's Homemade Sausage, uh, which is a really, really great spot for anything pork related. Uh, I've also been told that you can find this in most like Italian butcheries too. Um, so if you're uh, stateside but you're not in Hawaii, uh, that's where I would look for it is in any kind of Italian butcher. But if you are in Oakland, look for it at Taylor's Homemade Sausage because those guys are really cool. But yeah, it's nice and ready. Cool, so our kanji is just about there. I'm actually just gonna kill the heat because it's ready to go. Uh, then I'm gonna add, this is gonna be about two, maybe two tablespoons of oil here. Uh, that's grapeseed oil, I think. Uh, we're going light on the oil today because our Portuguese sausage is actually gonna render out quite a bit of fat. Uh, so we actually don't need too much oil here uh, because we're gonna rely uh, pretty heavily on the fat that's gonna render from out. Yeah. Nice, yeah. Uh, Portuguese sausage, if, by the way, if you're ever in Hawaii, that's the first thing that you should look for is Portuguese sausage. Actually, first thing you should look for is sashimi, which is also on my to-do list. As soon as I find a good source of, like, tuna. <laughs> so, also, as soon as I figure out how to make sashimi. You, you bought a walk just, just because of me, that's awesome. Uh, let me know how it goes for you. I'm sure that it, uh, learning how to cook on a walk is always a steep learning curve because it is super different from 
uh, like a standard frying pan. So let me know how that goes. I'm sure you're gonna have a fun time learning how to use that thing. You're getting better at cooking at home. Yeah, nice. That's what we that's what we aim for. I'm glad that people are learning. All right, so just like with our bacon, we're gonna look for a couple of things. Mainly what we're looking for right now is just a little bit of browning, uh, but we're also looking for is a little bit of that fat to render out a bit too. Oh yeah, that is absolutely going faster. So our croutons are nearly there. I'm going to also go in to stand by this statement uh, that a um, air fryer oven combo, if you ever see an air fryer slash oven combo, uh, all it really is, is that's essentially just a, a convection bake oven. That's, that's what it's doing. Uh, and if you're not familiar with convection bake, uh, essentially what that is is an oven that has a fan that circulates the heat, uh, which means that it cooks a lot faster. So um, in the commercial kitchen, you'll find that stuff uh, in the, the convection ovens that we use in our commercial kitchen. Uh, bakes I think like three or four times faster than the uh, like the standard ovens because of the way it's circulating air. Uh, I'm almost certain uh, that a uh, deep fryer, a, an air fryer that is also a toaster, uh, that's really all it's doing is just convection baking uh, and uh, baking really really fast. Cool. Uh, so once again, uh, if you are just tuning in, uh, definitely head over to the YouTube channel, check out what's going on over there. Uh, we're live streaming every Tuesday with, at 6.30 PST with new recipes out every Friday. So if you're looking for those recipes, that's a fun place to go. If you're watching on Reddit, that's the YouTube channel at the bottom of the screen. Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube, it's the channel that you're already watching on. So good job, you did it. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I love you too. I love you guys. I love all of you. Cool. So we're going to add a couple of other things, but really right at the end of all of um, all of the ingredients that we're going to add here. So we have our bacon ready to go. Our sausage is nearly there and our congee is pretty much there. And our croutons are... Yeah, those are done. Maybe a little bit past done. So I guess while that's going, we can take a look. Here's our finished croutons. These are a little bit dark, but I think that's okay. I actually like my croutons that way anyway. Um, so uh, as you can see, our, uh, this was like relatively fresh bread, but what's happened is uh, all of the moisture has been pulled out and that's how you make a crouton. Um, so if you're ever like, if you're into like making salads, uh, this is a fun and useful thing to know how to do. So I just went ahead and we just chopped up uh, all of the, that entire loaf of bread uh, because it was pretty uh, stale already. Uh, but if you've got an extra loaf of bread, if you've got like uh, leftover bread laying around and it's pretty stale, uh, this is a good way to use that up. So that's our croutons. That's real good. All right, that's nearly there.
cool. Let's get going. All right, so our sausage is just about there. Got some nice browning going on, but also this lovely fat, actually. I'd like that could go for a little bit longer. Uh, you don't want to try and pull sausage out too early, by the way, uh, because if it has, when your sausage has a lot of fat, uh, it's very important to make sure that it renders entirely, uh, because that's how you get like a chewy sausage that's never fun. Um, if you ever had a chewy sausage, that's what happens when it's slightly under. It's not, it doesn't mean that it's inedible. It really just means that not all the fat rendered out. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, it's gonna be really good. That's a good sausage. All right, so the very last thing that we're gonna do before we wrap things up here, I'm gonna reheat our wok one more time, then we're gonna fry our egg. Uh, in the original recipe, the video that we did, we actually did a poached egg uh, because that's how the, the cocoa head version does it, is it's topped with a poached egg on top. Uh, I don't really feel like poaching an egg because I don't have the right pots for it. I would have to get a whole different pot out. Uh, so I'm gonna actually just fry a lacy over easy egg, uh, which is gonna be just as good. Um, but before we do that, actually, you know what, before we do that, let's plate. I think that's a good idea. I'm going to plate first so that we can put the egg right on top. Uh, by the way, if you've ever, like, uh, tried to pre-cook, pre-fry an egg and, like, leave it sitting somewhere, so if you, like, fry an egg, put it on a plate, and then try and do something with it afterward, uh, that never works out for me. Uh, because what's happening is the yolk will pop while it's uh, sitting on the stove, or sitting on the, that plate. All right, so uh, what I like to do, uh, and this just occurred to me right before I started uh, doing this, uh, is have your plating ready to go. So once your plating is done, uh, then start frying the egg and have those fried fried eggs coming out uh, as you go because it's going to be uh, a little bit easier to make sure that that stuff doesn't like, your yolks don't break and things like that. Wrong. You love food. Yeah, me too. All right, so first up, here's our congee. Uh, which is, again, pretty much just overcooked rice. That's all kanji really is. Uh, and then uh, going in in order, here's our bacon solids. Uh, we're going to go fairly light with these toppings here because there's going to be quite a few of them. But there's our bacon solids. Uh, followed next by our Portuguese sausage. Uh, followed next by, here's our croutons. Where's the croutons? There they are. Uh, again, I'm also going around the rim. We're going in a circular pattern here. Uh, and what I'm really doing here uh, is I'm clearing this space uh, in the center for our egg. That's where our egg is going to land. Um, normally, you might see me start like filling stuff in from the center and going outward. Uh, we're specifically going in nice round circles here uh, to kind of leave room for our fried egg. So last up uh, before we finish this off. 
through the entire bowl. Yeah. Uh, so this should be a serving for four people. So I don't want to do that. Otherwise, there won't be enough for everybody else. Ooh, Creole dirty rice. I have not tried that. That sounds really good. Why are you cooking that much bacon? Oh, it's definitely going to get eaten. Don't worry. It will for sure get eaten. All right, so we're reheating our wok here. We want this to be ripping hot. So what we're going to do is uh, a lacy fried egg on high heat. So this is what the, like, the signature way of cooking an egg on a wok uh, is specifically in a, a sunny side up egg uh, that's cooked really, really fast. So what happens when you cook an egg really fast is it starts bubbling uh, and you get these really, really crisp edges going on. So uh, we will show you. Uh, here's our egg going in. We're going right in the center there uh, where that oil is sort of pulling up. Uh, and that's essentially, ooh, it's blowing out on both cameras. Yeah, eggs always blow out on the cameras, both of them. Uh, but what essentially is happening right now is because we're right in the center of that oil. Uh, is we're basically like shallow frying that egg right now, which is going to be awesome. And, and then what I'm doing is I'm going to use my spatula. Uh, and sort of spoon some fry, uh, fryer oil on top here. Uh, and that's just going to very, very gently cook uh, the top side of our uh, uh, sunny side up egg. Yeah, that, man, that is blowing out super hard. So good as, yeah, that's my favorite part about a Portuguese sausage is that it renders so much fat. Uh, and I absolutely was very intentionally spooning uh, uh, sausage fat in there. It's not quite there yet. There we go. <clears throat> All right, let's finish this up. Next up, here's our fried egg going on top. Oh, yeah, that's really good. That's going to be way better than a poached egg. Come on. Uh, and then next up, <coughs> here's our greens of our green onions going around the side again. Uh, and then finally, man, this thing has so many things on it. Uh, some white sesame seeds. Then next, this is some black sesame seeds. <laughs> a lot of things. Uh, and finally, this part is optional. I see people hold this a lot in a lot of the uh, Yelp reviews for this dish. Uh, and I think I held it when I ordered it at Cocoa Head too. Uh, but this is some maple syrup uh, that I'm just going to go very lightly around the rim. Uh, and that's it. No green onions, yeah, actually the green, so the whites of the green onions are worked into the, uh, uh, into the rice itself. Uh, but yeah, if you are, are noticing uh, that there's a significant lack of veggies, that means uh, that we're cooking Hawaiian food. Absolutely means that we're cooking Hawaiian food. I don't even eat this with chopsticks. I'm gonna plate this with chopsticks, but I'm 100% gonna eat this with a spoon later on. Crispy fried eggs are way better than poached eggs. Yeah. Yeah. They are healthier, though. <laughs> they look sexy. Yeah, thank you. Cool. All right. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. My name is Wesley. This is Wu Can Cook. Uh, if this is your first time tuning in to one of these streams, we're here every Tuesday at 6.30 PST uh, with new recipes coming out on my YouTube channel every Friday. So uh, every Friday, we've got a new recipe. Last Friday, we came out with uh, the recipe for this uh, kanji, uh, which is inspired by or basically we were like hacking. Uh, a recipe from a very, very popular uh, cafe in Honolulu uh, called Coco Head Cafe, uh, which features the probably the only fancy version of a uh, Chinese kanji uh, that I have ever seen. And the reason for that is a Chinese kanji is basically just overcooked rice uh, or like rice with too much water in it. That's basically all it is. It's rice that has been cooked uh, to the uh, consistency of porridge. 
Uh, and that's basically what kanji is when you're a kid. Uh, when I was growing up, at least, uh, the kanji that I ate was just like very, very simple. It was the stuff that I ate like right before school uh, when I was running really late. So it would be like, we would basically like have leftover rice uh, that you add some water to and then you microwave it for a little while. So if you microwave that for like a two and a half minutes, uh, that will turn into a kanji because it's basically overcooking the rice again. Uh, uh, and then we would like throw maybe like some soy sauce on it and that's basically it. Uh, so this is by far the fanciest kanji that I have ever seen. Um, so if you're looking for it though, that, 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 uh, this recipe it comes from a spot in Honolulu called Coco Head Cafe. If you're anywhere near Honolulu, uh, you should go and check them out because they're really, really tasty. Uh, but if you're not, uh, definitely check out the recipe for the because it's a really fun one to take a shot at. Uh, it's also like a really great excuse to make the fanciest kanji that you'll ever see. So, uh, the other thing th that I'll mention is that uh, lots, of the, lots and lots and lots of Asian cultures have uh, a rice porridge. Uh, kanji is specifically referring to the Cantonese interpretation of rice porridge. Uh, I uh, grew up in a Taiwanese family, so uh, we always called it shifan, which is, again, just rice porridge. Um, if you're Japanese, you might know it as bokayu. If you're Korean, you probably know it as juk. Uh, I think in Cantonese, there's an origin for another type of uh, rice porridge that's also just called juk. Uh, there, you will see it across every form of Asian food culture, obviously because it's basically just rice that's overcooked. So uh, any food culture that has rice has made rice porridge. So uh, if you're looking for that stuff, uh, all, lots and lots of more information like that in the YouTube video. So uh, definitely check that stuff out. Uh, we're working our way up to 6,500 subscribers by the end of the month, too, so if you want to help us hit our subscriber goal, please hop over and subscribe. Lots of cool stuff coming. Cool. <laughs> the difference bot. That's the first time I've gotten a bot on one of these things. When did... <laughs> what the hell is this bot? That's awesome. Also, I don't know who said the word then. I don't know who, who triggered, triggered this bot, but that's the first time I've seen a bot pop up on one of these things. Alright, cool. Cool, yeah. Thanks, you, thanks all for checking out. Uh, definitely head over to the YouTube channel, subscribe if you're interested. Please don't subscribe if you're not interested. Uh, I don't know why people do that. That's, you're just setting yourself up for failure. Cool. Alright, uh, we're going to come out this Friday coming up. We're doing, um, well, we're doing tofu pad thai, so we're going to do a crispy tofu pad thai. Uh, which is going to be the only type of tofu that you will ever like. <laughs> uh, what we did is we, uh, so I um, coated the tofu in a little bit of cornstarch, kind of like how you would do a Mongolian beef, uh, basically. Mongolian beef, by the way, is basically just a, a really, really tough cut of steak that's coated in cornstarch before it's fried. Uh, and then it fries really, really crispy because it's got that cornstarch. So I did that with some tofu and it got it became like the crispiest piece of tofu that I have ever achieved. So uh, we're gonna throw that in a pad thai uh, and cook through that recipe this coming, uh, uh, Friday coming up uh, and then we'll cook through it live next Tuesday. All right. Thanks everyone. I'll see you soon. Bye Tastes like strawberries on a summer evening And it sounds just like a song I want more berries and that summer feeling It's so wonderful and warm
Nothing's greater than the risk that comes 